download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. Hi, uh, the pentatonic two note per string shapes, but there are five of them, uh, really requires you to use an unorthodox fingering. When I, was, when I started out, I, I came from classical guitar and I was used to putting one finger per, on, on the fretboard like that, so each finger was designated to each fret. And then whenever a note appeared, right here, I used my third finger, my fourth finger, and so on. And then I started improvising, started learning that first position uh, blue scale or minor pentatonic shape. And then I really played that way for a long time, but it was not until I opened up for a new way of fingering the shape that I was really able to utilize it in all positions and go back and forth between positions and um, play all kinds of sequences within the shape. So I'm just going to give you that realization. Um, so we're going to go close up and then I'll show you the challenges of these shapes and and how to solve them in, a, in the most the rapid way possible. and. Uh, I'll give you a couple of exercises that you can loop over and over again that will just totally open up your playing within these shapes. The two note per string pentatonic shapes are some of the first we often learn because they're so effective. You can, you can use them over, uh, the scale can be used over a lot of chord progressions without changing scale, without changing the notes, but also they're super good for phrasing. And um, whenever I go, in, in my phrasing mode, I go from that classical position of holding my thumb uh, in the middle of the neck, you know, so, so my thumb is basically there uh, on the other side of the neck, and then I have my fingers placed like that, and that, that position works really well for... for <laughs> for faster work and, and when you really need to uh, execute each note in the most accurate way and you need to do it rapidly. But, but once you need to really uh, shape the note and really have influence on, on, on how it sounds, you really need some more strength in your hand. And how do you achieve that? Uh, because if I hold my hand like that, I can't really do the most effective bending uh, in this way. And vibrato is also, you know, limited to to. That's pretty good, but but it's but it's it doesn't feel as I don't have as much power when I when I'm holding my hand like that. So instead, I put my thumb up here. And if you watched blues players or anybody who's really afraid. <laughs> Then you know, or you've seen that hand position before, but this allows me to really get some strength in my hand so I can do the bending, the, the sliding. And I can suddenly mute all the strings, but the one I'm playing, because I'm really grabbing the neck. So this gives me uh, an, uh, an unending amount of, of options when it comes to... Right? So, so you can mute the strings, you can do vibrato, you can do bending in a completely different way. And so this is the way I grab the neck. But it's, it doesn't end there, as I said. We need to change our fingering as well to gain the most amount of strength and to be able to... And to be able to go back and forth between shapes and do sliding and, and all these things that we do when we phrase. So let's look at, at those fingering challenges and let's solve them right away. Things You should practice playing the pentatonic scale with the classical thing here. Because you're going to use that whenever you... Whenever you use 
use the Dorian uh, mode and throw it in there or, or use or you do faster work but once you phrase you want to use your third finger uh, up here because you have that you see I'm going from I'm going from using the classical um, way of doing it and then as soon as I end my line I use my third finger as soon, it, it just reaches out for it there and so it's a really good exercise or a really good idea to, to practice that using that third finger and the way to do that is basically because I never I never practiced going back and forth between this position and this position and using my third finger I just practiced using my third finger <laughs> and then it just came about um, so what you can do is and you can play the whole scale like that as if you only had three fingers and most pe pe people when they look at that and say oh that's totally wrong that's, uh, you shouldn't be doing that but you should uh -huh. but because once you have that feel see I started using my fourth finger as well there but as soon as you, as soon as you have that feel it doesn't feel uncomfortable anymore and you get that distance into your brain, that stretch there. It doesn't become a visual stretch of looking down on your fingers and seeing, okay, this is where I need to be. It becomes something that you just feel it. Right? You just feel it, and you don't have to look down anymore. And, and that's kind of a, a feeling in the hand of where the notes are. Um, so that's a really good idea. And you can do a nice exercise of just saying, for a week I'm going to play through the pentatonic scale, but every time I do, I'm not going to use my fourth finger. Um, a second thing about fingering here is that um, uh, not only do I use the third finger to, to do this, uh, to play the, the top note of a minor third interval, I also use, when, for, for instance, when we're down here, I also use, let's say you have a whole tone interval here, on uh, we're in A minor pentatonic, I'm in the fifth and the seventh fret. Um, and I want to do something like, I reach over here. I use my second finger to play a note on the D string in the seventh fret, even though I have this position here. So it goes from its classical fret here to a higher fret and then to another string. So I get this kind of awkward way of... awkward way of playing but that is so beneficial because suddenly it's not it's not I, I, th I used to I used to really feel that being very awkward and, and, and wrong but when you when you turn your hand from this position to this position you get kind of a sideways way of playing and then you can quite easily actually What it does to your playing is you start you, you start having more options as to what sequences you can play, what melodies you can play within uh, the scale, because it's not it's not a problem anymore to go. So so I really recommend that. And the only thing you need to do to, in order to be very good at that is to just play. So you simply hammer on. It's just that little exercise here. Fifth fret G string. Pick that. And then hammer on to the seventh, and then pick that note um, in, on the D string in the seventh fret with a downstroke, and then a, an upstroke again, and then you're back to the start here in the seventh fret G string. Also go. So you go back and forth. But this this thing here is exactly where you need it because you can't cannot really go. You know your your, your third finger has to roll over there, which is really awkward. So this just doing this really opens up the whole thing. Allows you to play something that you wouldn't be able to play just using a classical fingering, so that's very important. 
The third thing that is a really good idea to, to focus on and practice is going between shapes here, because that's another place where the third finger can really help you. Let, let me play just a simple little sequence here. I'm in the A minor pentatonic again, fifth and seventh fret on both the B and E string. So first position, uh, minor pentatonic shape. Right? And if I play that with my fourth finger, which I do often, as I said, when I'm doing faster things, and while I don't need to influence each note as much, um, if I do that and I, I play a sequence like this, then what I end up with when I come, this is okay, having my fourth finger here, but when I then do this, I have to slide up with my fourth finger here, up to this note, and then the shape up here looks like two whole tones uh, on both strings. So I have the 10th fret and the 8th fret. And I end up with my 4th finger on the last note, which means that I'll use my 1st finger on this one, which means that I have, you know, this really feels weird. And I have my weakest finger on the top note, which is a really cool note to bend or slide or vibrate, or vibrate on. Um, and so I really want my 3rd finger there instead. So. Whenever I do that kind of position shifting, I just substitute my fourth finger for my third finger. Because what happens then is, this is quite comfortable. Using my third finger. But when I then slide up, I'm in a perfect position to play whole tone. With my two strongest fingers here. So, whenever I'm playing faster lines, let's say, um, you, you could say an example, I'm playing something like this. And then as soon as I end that, and I need to really influence that end note, I go to my third finger immediately. And that's a really good uh, thing to practice uh, whenever you're doing faster things. Right? Uh, that shift there to your third finger or your uh, first finger. Um, but uh, at the same time, I'm practicing that when I go to another position, I... So I might do... You see? That, that last thing there... I'm using my third finger instead of my fourth finger, even though I just... Right? And the way to practice that is basically just to go... So you play any little shape while you use the classical way of fingering things, and then you end that by hitting uh, the last note, or the second last note with your third finger, and then sliding it up. Again, third finger there. So these are really valuable, tiny little insights because it, it'll just change the way you look at those uh, pentatonic shapes. And um, what I do often is, of course, I, I, I mix the pentatonic scale with the Dorian mode. Um, I use chromatic uh, and all kinds of things. So I have more than two notes per string. But whenever I go into that phrasing, that phrasing mode, I go from this to this, grabbing the neck completely. Um, so let's just look at shortly that little sequence I played. And a good idea here actually could be to use your fourth finger on the B string and then shift to your third finger when you do the shift, just to teach your brain what it is that we're doing here. So let's look at it. Um, we're in the seventh and the eighth fret, and we're still A, A minor pentatonic. So I pick that first note uh, with a downstroke and hammer on to the eighth fret. And then I pick the fifth fret with an upstroke and then back to the eighth fret with a downstroke. And then back to the uh, fifth fret on the high E string with an with an upstroke. So that's the first thing. Then I hammer on to the eighth fret, and that's the end of it. And I do that with my third finger. So now you both have the fourth and the third in play here. All right? And then I slide that up. Without picking it. And then I reverse the whole sequence, go down again. So it's, it looks like this upstroke. Oh, there's no stroke here because I just slide it up. 
pull off down to the uh, from the tenth to the eighth fret. Downstroke in the tenth fret on the B string. Upstroke in the eighth fret on the high E string, and then downstroke again in the tenth fret on the B string. So. down to the 8th fret on the B string, so, pull off down there and then, and we just play the whole thing one time uh, relatively slowly. slide down without picking and, and start over again on this note. And that will really teach your brain when to do that third finger thing when you're sliding up to a new shape. Right? So that's a really neat exercise. So we have two exercises now. We have 